Now we all know how easy it is to design something in Figma, but recently I've been getting a lot of comments that ask me how to turn Figma into something more real and tangible, something that requires HTML, CSS, and you can actually visit it online, right? A real landing page. So in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this Figma file, which we designed in the last episode of this series, and turn it into a Webflow hero page or a Webflow landing page. And we're gonna do that under 10 minutes so you guys can see just how easy it actually is to do. Now, before we get started here, if you're new to the channel, my name is Arna Ross, I'm a designer, and I like to help you become a better designer as well. So if you like the video, like and subscribe and always stick around to the end to see how this transforms into a real website. Now let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to notice here if you checked out the last video is that I transformed this Figma file into an auto layout system. So what that means is that if you know anything about web design and how websites are built is that everything is basically rectangles within rectangles. And what I mean by that is this. So you see that we've got this main hero section here or this main container or this main div block, right? And you see that if I double click it, it splits off into two different blocks or two different from containers as well. And one way to think about it is that each container holds important information that's relative to the other containers so you know how separate everything is. And the beauty of Figma is that we can control how far apart or how close we want this section to be just by typing in a few numbers. Now I'm going to keep this at 64 and I'll explain you guys why in the next part. So we see that we've got these two containers here, right? We've got the nav and then we've got the hero content or the hero section. And if we double click again, we'll see that we split again into nav link and then the logo or the main branding part of the website. And the same thing happens in the hero section. So we've got the image on the right side and then the content or the actual text and the CTA on the left side. And that again is split off into two different blocks, one being the button and then the other being the text. Here we've got a H1 or a heading text and then just the sub body main body text here. Now all the data of the actual fonts and sizing to everything is given to us here. So if you want to measure the distance relative to the button, then we just have to click the actual auto layout format and hold option and it'll tell us that relative to the other button, it's 64 pixels. So let's go ahead and build this out in Webflow in under 10 minutes and I'll try to show you guys how easy this actually is. So the first thing I'm going to do in this blank Webflow page here is hold command K to bring up the search bar or the search content. And the first thing I'm going to do is type in navbar and I'm going to just leave that in there. And I'm going to want to change the color to be transparent just so we can inherit the value of the actual hero section. And you'll notice that we don't have a brand here or logo and let's just go ahead and export the data here. So we're going to select the actual logo and then we'll also export the image here just so we have them both and then we're going to want to click export and let's do 2x and both png now you can also export the logo as an svg but for this it's just easier if we export it as one so now that we've imported these two images into the asset panel we're going to want to just drag this in to the brand section or the brand div block and that seems a bit big right so what we're going to want to do is go over to the actual auto layout here double click our way onto the logo and then we can just check the sides right here so we want this to be 118 by 70 so let's just type that in right now we're going to want to be 118 by 70. And you see that that just automatically transformed the size to fit exactly what we need. Now we're gonna to wanna to change this to be team about us in origin. So let's just do that right now. We've got team about, let's just add us and then changes to origin. And we see that that just transforms that easily. So let's go ahead and build out the actual hero content of this page, right? We're gonna go ahead and add in a section and this will be our hero section. So we can just call it that, call it hero. And then we wanna check the distance between the nav bar and the actual section. So we can go ahead and do that as well. We'll click our way through into the actual section here. And by holding option, we see that it's 64 pixels to the nav bar. So we'll go ahead and type that in. We'll put 64 pixels. Let's check the height here. It's gonna be 450 pixels, so we'll just do that as well. And that kind of takes care of that section, right? Now I noticed that the nav bar is a little bit close to the top, so we're gonna see how close that is, and that's just 31 pixels. Now that's just a random number, and we can just round it even, and we'll see that that automatically just looks better. So let's go ahead and build out this actual main section here. We're gonna want two div blocks, so we can go ahead and add that in. We've got a div block here, and then another div block. Within the section, let's go ahead and make this into a flex box, and let's set them to be horizontal and then justify it to the middle. Now within this div block, you can just call this something arbitrary like left and then call this something like right. Now this is just so you know that this is the left side and then the right side, right? Okay, within this one, we're gonna wanna add another div block because if we check the actual hero here, we see that this left side is compromised of two other auto layouts, right? So there's the text block and then there's the actual button as well. So we want this to be an actual div block as well. So now that we've added that in, we'll call it the text section and then we can start adding in our actual actual text formats, right? So we're gonna click Command K again and type in the heading, make this an H1, 
And then within this div, again, we can type in text box or text block, and that takes care of that. Now for now, I'm just adding in the bare bones so that we get the structure right, and then we can start styling everything as much as we need to. So within left, we're gonna add a button as well. And note that this button actually isn't inside the text div block or the text auto layout, right? It's not inside that. We want it to be separate from that so we can justify the distance. So we're gonna leave that as button and change the text to be find locations. Okay, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and import the image onto the right side. Now really quickly before we get into this, if you guys wanna use Webflow, make sure you guys use the link in the description because that will help out the channel. Now without further ado, let's get right back into the video. Now we don't actually need a div block on the right side, but just to show you guys how easy this is, we're gonna go ahead and add the image. So we're gonna to wanna to drag this in, and that seems a little bit big to me, so let's check the size on that one. So this shows that it's 450 by 490, so we can just change the height image here to 490 and that will automatically justify the height based on the actual horizontal so it stays with the same ratio. Now that we've got that going, let's go ahead and change the heading to be appropriate within the style that we want. So we're gonna go ahead and just copy this text here into this and then also copy this text into this text block. Okay, now that we've got that going, everything is in place, but the style doesn't look very right, right? So what we want to do is pick the right fonts, pick the right sizes, and start to space things out so that it makes sense. But before we do that, we're going to want to change the body color. Now, usually you would do this in the section, but because we only have one section here, it's totally fine to do that. So we're going over here to backgrounds, and we need to pick a color. So let's go ahead and reference our Figma file. We'll pick the frame, double click on the hex code, and paste that one in. So now we see that it changed the color, but now all the text looks wrong and everything just, just looks out of place, right? So we're gonna wanna go ahead and change this and we can name this nav link or nav, something like that. We're gonna wanna name all the nav links to be exactly the same so that when we change one color, all the colors change as well. Let's change this color to be white. Let's change all the colors to be white as well so that they all match and make sense in terms of contrast. So we change that and change that. So the font itself, we can find it just by hovering over the actual text block and seeing that it's Frank Rule Libre 60 and then auto. So let's go ahead and type that in. So we've got to select the correct one. So we've got Frank Rule Libre over here. Let's go 60 pixels and then 100%. And then the same thing for the text block. We've got this, which is Nunito, 25 and then automatic. So we've got Nunito down here, we've got 25, and then let's do 100% as well. So now we've got that going, but this button doesn't look too right. So let's go ahead and change that as well. We want this fill to be the right one. And let's just remember that these styles are guaranteed to be matching in the real world, right? So we wanna go ahead and change that to be correct. So we've got 13 and then 31 around the sides. So let's go ahead and change that. And let's just make it even. Let's make it 15 and 30, why not? And then we can change the color here by going to background and pasting this color in. Now that looks fine, but the text actually doesn't look right. So we want to change it to Frank Rule Libre. So go ahead and do that and change it to be the right size as well. Lastly, in terms of scale and size here, the team is obviously not the right size. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and give it the right number. So we do 20 and then that should be fine. Okay, so now we've got all the data, all the correct numbers and all the correct colors, but the spacing is all wrong, right? Everything just doesn't make sense here. So let's go ahead and change that. We wanna select the left side here and give it a value of 521. That will change the scale of everything and make the left side a lot more compact. So let's go 521 and we'll see that this is already starting to make more sense. Let's go ahead and separate out this to be 54. So we've got the top heading here and let's just separate that to be 54. We want to get rid of the spacing here. And then let's select the text div as well and change that to be 64 because as we see, that's what Figma tells us, right? So we want to go ahead and make sure that's the right one. Now, comparing this to Figma, we see that this actually doesn't look too right. So I'm going to go ahead and change that something to 150. That looks closer. And we're going to want to center this section over here in the middle. So we're going to change this to a flex box, direction vertical, and then we're going to want to justify it through the left and then in the middle. Now the sizing looks a little bit off, so we're going to want to decrease that by a bit. And that looks more appropriate. We're also going to want to change this section and let's give it an even number of around 20 all around. And now what we want to do is give it the appropriate space between the actual text box and the CTA and then the actual large image. So we go over here to the left and give it a spacing of 64. So now that's the same in Figma as it is in Webflow, but the nav bar here, it looks a little bit off. So this nav link here is within an actual div block. So what we wanna do here is make it the same width as this image, and that seems to be 490. So if we type in 490, and we space everything out evenly with a flex box, 
Now I've gone ahead and done some extra work here, but the basic thing is that the nav menu is the same width as the actual image. And so what that allows us to do is match those exact parameters to be the same size. And as you can see, it's a little bit tight here, but that's because we're in the wrong size. So if we go ahead and change it to 1280 pixels, we'll see that it's much closer to the actual image that we have here on Figma. Now, given this is only a 10 minute tutorial or 13, 14, whatever this came out to be, it's not gonna be the best thing in the world, right? But if you give yourself a couple of hours here this will come out to be a really really nice website now if we want to go ahead and preview this or publish it we can go ahead and click the publish icon here and what that allows us to do is give us a preview link that you guys can go ahead and access so if you go ahead and click this link right here we'll see that this is a real website that works we've got real working buttons here this image that you can drag out this is a real button this, this is all text that is real right this is a real landing hero so what that allows us to do here is have the flexibility to pretty much build out anything we want in figma and we can go ahead and move it into Webflow. And what that allows us to do here is really have the freedom of design and we can just move around anything we want and have it be the exact parameters that it should be. I'll go ahead and leave the link to this Webflow page down in the description. If you guys wanna check out Webflow, then also use the link in the description because that will help out the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.